Welcome, people. Uh, we decided to do something special for Lads Discuss Death Hour because it has pretty much been apparent we love doing third topics, whether they're controversial uh, or just silly fun like Lads Debate or just discussing things that go on in the community. However, while behind the scenes, we're always coming up with, oh, let's do this and that. But we keep coming up with so many ideas that <laughs> we have a bit of a list, let's just say. So we came up with an idea. How about you decide on what we should discuss for the third topic for the next three episodes? Because after the next third, after the third, third topic of the ones that are on the poll, we're doing another lads debate. So you two know what that lads debate is because it's between you two. So get researching, boys. <laughs> So I am ready as best I can for that. All right, then. So we decided to ask you people, uh, between these four topics, theme versus stats, episodes we were too harsh on, or Deadliest Warrior, the show that inspired Death Battle. And from the poll, 42% of you chose Deadliest Warrior, the show that inspired Death Battle, 35 for episodes we were too harsh on, and theme versus stats. The poll was given our answer. If it changes over time, people, by the time we're recording this, that is the poll. We had 26 votes on this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I was surprised at how many people wanted Deadliest Warrior to be the first topic we talked about, though. Like, yeah. nearly 50% of people. So, people, what does Deadliest Warrior have to do with Death Battle? Well, I mean, if you've read the poll, then yeah, I pretty much said it. It's the show that... Without it, we might have not had Death Battle. Mo I want to say might have, because obviously other things inspired Death Battle, like Monty Olm, uh, and all these other like franchises, and even... First Debate has been around for so long. Hell, I'm pretty sure it's been around since like the Greek era, with all the gods that have came about. But I'm yeah, sure there's been the some people that debated is, that. It... Yeah, yeah I, I can go over the... like some of the story, if you like. Uh, yeah, you're, you're more knowledgeable on the behind the scenes of Death Battle, so do you want to talk about them referencing Deadliest Warrior? Okay, so back in the day when it was uh, Screw Attack, and uh, when Ben was first interning, like, he started working there because he wanted to uh, work at Rooster Teeth, and well, hey, he does now, so yay, <laughs> Ben. Uh, depend on the, your opinion on Rooster Teeth, that's either uh, a win or an L. Uh, take your pick. Well, anyway, so one of the things uh, they have to do with companies like that is make content. you got to make shows. So that's something that Ben had to come up with. And he, of course, it's got to be approved by uh, Craig. Craig, like, however you want to pronounce his name, like, um, who was the boss of Screw Attack at the time. And he knew that uh, he was a fan of Deadliest Warrior. So he was like, okay, so I got to think of something maybe similar to that. He came across Hey Lloyd, which was done by Monty Ohm. And it featured Master Chief versus Samus Aran. And, you know, of course, he's known about First Bane uh, beforehand because he'd read through forums. Still one of the best OG so, early YouTube videos, man. I remember watching that in secondary oh, for school. Sure. And I was like, one man fucking did this. <laughs> No, I mean, not one man, one legend. Yeah, like, like still, my favorite part from that animation has to be when Master Chief, or people say Master Cheeks, uh, yeah, fires the sniper rifle and it reflects off the jackal's shield. I was like, that is, that was hardcore. That <laughs> like, was epic. I um, wish you could do that in the game, man. Like, can you imagine? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, so go on. I just wanted uh, to guess actually, about that. Actually, no, I think you can deflect sniper shots off of the jackal you shields. You can, but not onto an extent like that and take out like 30 no, guys. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, you can't aim it for sure. Like, but can you, can that you, is pretty, pretty great. Um, can you imagine being that jackal, though, that deflects the bullets? Like, hey guys, I deflected it. And you just see your friend in front of you, just like, ooh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> First day. <laughs> Right, so with all these combined and changing the matchup to Samus versus Boba Fett, Death Battle was born, and from then on it became what we know of it today. And unlike Deadliest Warrior, Death Battle's still going strong and getting better. Okay, well, I, I sound like I'm ripping into it, but uh, right, we'll go into more. 
Uh, sure, well, go ahead. Halo was definitely interesting. Halo was definitely an interesting one. But allow the magic of this time wizard here to allow me to take you guys back to a time before YouTube was mainstream. Welcome to Spike TV, a show that a, a channel that showed epic stuff. They're mostly known for shows nowadays like Ink Master, for example. But back in the day, someone had the idea of this of a versus debate show to try to make it mainstream. An episode of the Apaches versus the Gladiator. This would become Deadliest Warrior. A yeah. show done by a production crew with three main hosts. One to talk about history, one that ran a simulation, and one that analyzed the injuries based off the weaponry of the combatants. Yeah, so... Okay, now I want to say to people, have I binged the entire show? No, because let me tell you something. Find a Deadliest Warrior online, especially in the UK, I'm not sure what it's like in America for you, Sean. It was practically impossible. YouTube, TV, the, it's apparently this show's owned by Paramount, and I thought, oh, maybe on Paramount Plus, let me just uh, make a, fr let me go on the trial and watch it there. No, apparently it's not on there, it's like, oh, okay. Like, I had to watch this on Daily Motion, and even then they only had limited episodes. And other times I just had to look up what happened in an episode through script fandoms and then watch the fight on YouTube. I was like, why is this show just so hard to get? And I will get into why I think that is, but let's actually talk, I want to talk at least about the episodes I saw. So, Sean already mentioned it, Gladiator vs. Apache, uh, Viking vs. Samurai, that was pretty cool. Uh, Yakuza vs. the Mafia, so this wasn't like just ancient warriors, this was like modern... Okay. I was like, wow, really? Funny enough. Funny enough, that's the episode I tried to watch, but it wasn't that. Really? Huh. Yeah, it was titled Mafia vs. Yakuza, but it was uh, Roman Centurion versus Oh, Rajpun. There we go. Yeah, but that was the other one. I forgot uh, the name. The finale of season one was the IRA versus the Taliban. And honestly, given the Taliban history these days, that's, um, hmm. I hope that this technically wasn't the season one finale, oddly enough. Yeah, okay, it wasn't, but from what I saw online, uh, the finale, though, was Back for Blood, which all the winners had a basically a free-for-all, but I wasn't able to find that anywhere, not even a fight of it. Uh, I'll go through the last uh, three episodes I saw before we get to it. Um, Aztec Jaguar versus Zande Warrior, which that's probably my favorite. KGB versus the CIA, and Persian Immortal Celts, or Versa Celts. So, okay, uh, but I did also see the finale, which, yeah, let's just say this, the finale is basically where shit went wrong. Or even just season three is very infamous for being the downfall of this series. But, Sean, why don't you give us a rundown of when you first saw the show? Because you seem to be very knowledgeable on it compared to me and Mate. Because, sure, so, I've heard of it, but never thought to try and find it and watch it. The only way I could watch it is by buying off Amazon. But season one costs thirty two ninety nine. I'm like, fuck off. I don't so I'm not Warrior, that. So Deadliest Warrior first appeared in 2009, funny enough. Back on Spike TV. On IMDb currently, I'm looking at it right now, it is still a 7.5 out of 10. So it's still a solid show and it's still holding up to some degree on this day and age. Yeah, I think it's one of those shows where at the time people laughed at it, but over time people have actually started to see the charm in it because... There is a things I actually really do like about this show. For instance, this is something I kind of want to talk about with Death Battle Sunday. I love the fact they actually bring in some big professionals on the, a lot of these warriors. They've actually brought in an ex-Russian spy to talk about the KGB. Uh, they brought in someone who's familiar with gladiator history, and they actually test the weaponry. Now, obviously, Death Battle can't like test out the BFG or stuff like that, obviously, but. But if you want to see some cool shit, like, hey, you want to see a katana cut through a pig? Yup. Yep. How about a giant whip sword cutting through multiple targets at once? We can do that, too. <laughs> My favorite episode, though, of the ones I was able to watch, the Aztec Jaguar versus the Zande Warrior. Mostly because in the fight, there was this funny moment when he pulls an arrow, and the arrow, because it's so far away, they said, like, the weapon's not good at long range. The arrow just goes past his head, and he just looks at it and just looks back, and there's that silence. I was like, <laughs> I actually was like, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Funny enough, Bill, it's actually one of the lowest rated on IMDb oh, that at was a my... 6.7. Oh, that was my favorite, though. It was funny. And, oh, the, the people they had, uh, the two guys talking about the uh, Aztec guys, 
they were so into it. When they were testing out the weapons, mate, they were legit speaking in their language going, uh, I don't want to try and mimic it in case it sounds racist. <laughs> Um, and, you know, a white man impersonating an African accent doing the language, I'm not sure would go well with people. <laughs> Probably not. But, uh, yeah, they were, like, really into it. And what I loved about this show, which many people tend to think is kind of cringe, is the rivalry between the people that are defending the other opponent. And I'm just going to say it. I think Death Battle is actually missing the debate aspect of it. And, honestly, I feel like Deadliest Warrior brought the debate of it. Because, okay, here's the thing. Sure, Wiz and Boomstick are meant to be, like, fictional characters who've already researched it and they've already programmed the fight to happen. But obviously since these aren't characters, these are actually people who have researched this, who've tested their weaponry. And honestly, the weapon testing is so fun to watch. Like the Celt episode where this guy had that little mace and he was just going ham on these floating heads. It was like, these people are into it and I love it. What am I... <laughs> One of my personal favorites happened in Spartan vs. Ninja. They were testing how effective a giant Spartan shield was. And just look at the size of those things on that person. Yeah. Holy shit. It, like, this is something I think, I can see where Death Art took these brains. And obviously when you're doing something for like fictional characters, it, you can't actually test out the weaponry because it's practically impossible. Or if you were to somehow make a, some sort of pale imitation like yeah no one's ever going to make a green lantern ring <laughs> so of... deadliest uh, go ahead bill but of course though surprisingly this show came with controversy dun 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 specifically back on may 26th with william wallace versus shaka zulu not just that so now this one i want to talk about first because this one's we can tear it apart easily the whole American propaganda behind this, because I'm going to give some spoilers. Uh, mate, take a guess who won between the Americans versus the North Korean Special Forces. Let me guess. America. Fuck yeah. Now here's the next question, mate. Who do you think won against the American Rangers and the, oh, no, the CIA and the KGB? Same answer. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so... This got people thinking, is there some American propaganda going on behind this? And to that, I had to say, I don't know. The correct <laughs> answer is no. Yeah. You know well, why? Go ahead. Let's go back to season one. The first ever was the Green Beret versus the Spitzna. America versus Russia. Guess who won? Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. They lost in their first debut with their strongest army force. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. I think it, it was more so because this is more of the modern era stuff like that. So obviously, they, but at the same time, it's like... The best way I can equivalent this is like when people got upset for DC beating non-Marvel, essentially. That was the case. Yeah. Well, you get that with like so many death battles, like... I... Mate, I still remember, remember back how... in the day some stuff. Hey, you remember how big that one in particular was, though, right? Like, every time a non Marvel character faces a DC character, they lose, and people will complain about it being biased and everything to make spite matchups. Yep. It was, it was that bad, essentially. Well, to be fair, though, they did legit try and make a fight where a DC character would lose, which was Green Lantern versus Ben 10. Which I thought was kind of shitty, so it's like, I don't like the idea of spite matchup. We've kind of discussed that already, so we're not going to beat a dead horse. Speaking of beating dead horses, though, no joke, they would sometimes test weaponry on these, like, mannequin-like characters with, like, realistic flesh and organs to see how lethal they were. They even tested it on, like, horse mannequins, which was really weird. <laughs> they did that specifically for the Aztec Jaguar because his weapon yeah. was made of obsidian. Yeah. Like, so, oh yeah, going to my main point, though, what I loved about this show, just watching these few episodes, the debate between the people represent... You know like how when we do lads debate, it's fun seeing either me and mate go against one another, mate or Sean, or the other way around? That's fun, because we actually... It feels as though we are trying to show why the other's winning, whereas Death Valley with, like, Wiz and Boos, like, the only time we've ever gotten something close to that was the Raiden versus Excalibur episode. I was thinking that. Yeah, but... Like... That was fun though. Like, I actually I like the whiz and boomstick debate aspect. I want I kind of want that to be more frequent. I don't know. Maybe if we get more bonus episodes. Yeah, but why should it be a bonus episode? Like, I just enjoyed the fact they got all these weapon expert 
Esperts? Esperts. <laughs> well, I mean, why is have... my lisp this year? Why have I been so bad at wording things? <laughs> I mean, they have had like some stuff kind of like that, like when um, like when Hiei beat Sasuke, there was like, boom sticks. Wait, 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 really? <laughs> or when uh, Booster Gold beat Cable, it's just like, I, I'm a, no. How did that golden dingus beat mutant Jesus? It's still the funniest joke. Uh, uh, by the way, again, Chris Pratt for Booster Gold, just saying. <laughs> but, <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Shank, shank. Oh, speaking of shank, shank, the most infamous video that's ever come around this show is the infamous fat man with the whole navy he's apparently he's an ex navy seal mate and he is testing out a knife on this random body let me actually send you the video for this while sean gives his point because this guy i think it he had some aggression a yeah i think it he became had some, a meme yeah uh i'll let sean maybe talk about some more interesting aspects of this show before we get into well, I was going to so, bring up to the downfall of this show and why I think it failed, but... So, the, the show has done a variety of things. Uh, besides doing the generic warriors such as Yakuza, Mafia, in general, they eventually touched on historical figures like William Wong's Chaka Zulu. But one of my personal favorite episodes of all time, Jesse James versus Al Capone. Because of the idea of it being a modern day mafia versus a old school cowboy. Hmm. Yeah, that's what they I tested the weapons not only in the car's design at the time of Al's reign, but also they tested weapon on horseback. Yeah, like why lights what I originally before I even went into looking up this stuff, I just assumed it was about ancient wars. But when I saw it, it was like testing modern weaponry, they were testing current US military, the KGB, I was like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. I think what made this show more interesting for me, for, for at least the first two seasons, was the fact because they're using real life testing and stuff like that, it made it learning about these things so much. And the fact they had a real doctor to examine the wound to be like, yes, this would be a lethal blow. Or even blows you thought looked lethal, he'd be like, at worst, this would leave a, a minor broken bone, but you could still fight. I was like, wow interesting like the celtic warriors i know of them like the scottish and irish crazy berserkers but i never realized just how insane they were or the persian army it's like i've heard of persian warriors but it's like eh, they just kind of seem like uh before the taliban they just kind of seem like another ver like a past version of them no they they were literally given the name immortal for a reason like they were literally trained from birth well not birth that would be implied that babies were wielding spears but <laughs> like you know, when they're like children, they are learning discipline, they're learning war and stuff like that. And how one of their most infamous things is when they shoot arrows into the sky, all you see is a black cloud of arrows. I thought that was just an exaggeration in the movie, like uh, 300, but turns out that was legit a, a horror story told about the Persians. I was like, wow. Like, it was, that's, yeah. what, that's what I like about Death Row as well. Like, when you're learning these characters you may not be familiar with, and you're like, whoa, this, these guys are cool. And also, before we continue on, Sean, uh, mate, I want to hear your reaction to this scene here. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ! Yeah. <laughs> you can. This guy became a meme. <laughs> like so many videos on this one man. I think some of them are like. 100k views uh some God, he went straight for the jugular too yeah some yep. of them are like 13 million it's like fucking hell man this guy is insane <laughs> hopefully the audience at home enjoyed seeing that because oh boy yeah and these are like real testers they have the same muscle skin as like a human has so that imagine that as a person <laughs> but this is what made the show interesting for me it's like they're actually testing these weaponry showing Oh, would this decapitate someone? You see this one swing of this like sword and it cleans a man's head off. You're like, ah, oh. it's like, it's really interesting. And, and of course, what of course Death Out took the main inspiration from after this, just Sean said, they would do a calculate, a calculation. It's all special simulation. effects. Simulation. Yeah, it's a sim simulation, but, a, but an actual fight in live action with actors and everything. Yeah, but what I like as well, when mm. they're doing like 
talking about the weaponry as well, but this show had some budget. People could play about the special effects, but given all the work that clearly went into the costumes, the effects, I can understand why this show may look cheap to a lot of people, but if we could give, like, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know, a pass for her crappy, like, special effects, aside the, you know, makeup eyes, of course, then, yeah, we could give a, we could give a break to Deadliest Warrior. And, yeah, the fights, some of them are pretty laughable, because... Many of the times they're just picking up random weaponry that are just laid in the f an empty field, which on one hand, yeah, that's a bit weird, but at the same time, they're, they're trying to show which weaponry would reign the superior. It is kind of funny in uh, one of in the uh, KGB one, the guy r assault rifle runs out and no joke pulls out a slingshot because that was also one of their arsenal. It's like, that, that's kind of <laughs> stupid, but I love it. <laughs> um, so... Okay, That's so, just me thinking, but if Bart Simpson was a secret agent. Yeah. Um, I, I really did like a lot of these episodes. Um, like I said, uh, Jaguar versus, uh, what was it again? Uh, oh, I've got the episode name here. Dante. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, I love, obviously they don't go too much with dismemberment because it's cheap, but I also liked when they're sh describing the weaponry, like the weapons expert, they show a live action recreation of what it would do to someone, showing their heads being caved in or blown up and stuff like that. But you can tell the people behind the show loved it. Like, they were having fun debating it. They were having fun, like, testing the weaponry. But now this raises the big question, people, which is going to be one of my main topics. If this show clearly had a lot of work behind it, why did it fail? Well, I think for me, that has to come for season three. Now... Ah, uh, yes, the last season. Now... Many of these episodes aren't highly rated. Many of these are said to be the killers of this show. One, I don't even think they even had a battle royale for the season two winners, did they, Sean? They did not. No. Now, they had Joan of Arc, but the fight I watched a little bit on YouTube and my god, it was awful. Some of the effects weren't too bad, they clearly had a bigger budget. But just so many really boring type of fights, none of them memorable. Like, Crazy Horse versus Pancho Villa, it's like, what? what? It focused a lot on modern day, like, historical figures in season 3, compared to the other two seasons where it was just warriors from different time periods. Yeah, and the thing that kind of ruined it as well is that many of them didn't really have the infusion. I mean, hell, the guy that did the simulation wasn't even part of the show anymore. He left. Yeah. There was a lot of drama behind the someone, scenes. Oh, sorry, go ahead. They got they got a different person, not only did the simulation, but they hired another guy who does who did this section called X Factors. And I'm just sitting there like I don't think that's necessarily like good for like a show like this. Yeah. But whereas the previous season had like, you know, pirates and stuff like that, knights, all these iconic or not iconic, but you know, famous type of warriors. And yet, I'm just saying here, there's still plenty of warriors throughout, throughout human history. Like, um, you know, why didn't we get like Native Americans? Why didn't we get like uh, Shinobis uh, or Berserkers? Okay, so but no, here's the thing that's the. Speaking, I'll tell you, those are like broader. Those are, those are broader words. We did get a Shinobi and Ninja versus Spartan, technically. I know, but. It's this... one of the highest rated episodes. There's still so many things that, and some of them were mismatches. Pirates versus knights. Do you guys not know of the infamous nerd debate between ninjas and pirates? <laughs> the reason they did that was they thought that the knight's armor would give the knight an advantage. I suppose, but here's the other I thing. I think I remember, I remember hearing about that episode from Liam when he was on Wolf's podcast uh, back in the day, and he just goes, "The knight should have won." I mean, I do think that as well, but I, at the same time, know that was fun. But now, here's where I think this season truly fell off for me. Now, mate, let me ask you this question. So, you're thinking of Deadly's Warrior of these ancient things. Now, you're thinking this show is just about ancient warriors, but also modern-day warriors, right? Right. Well, guess what the big old finale was? The big old finale to this whole series is Vampires versus Zombies. What? Yep. Vampires versus Zombies. I was like, what? You have... This is your big finale as well. This isn't like, oh, 
uh, this is just a finale for this season. Maybe it was when they were going to do more later on, but the show got cancelled because the viewers were oh, rocking. Here's what's crazy. This was technically a double finale. They also released the Garkus versus the French Foreign Legion the same day they did Vampires versus Zombies. Yeah, but to me, that episode as well was not that interesting, but to me, this is where I realized this is why this show failed. Because the first two, they sure they had some cringy moments, they may even had some mismatches, but they were fun. Like, you could tell the people behind the show were having fun, you know, debating this. They were getting really into it. Like, when they're testing the weaponry, you can feel the enthusiasm from both sides. But season three just kind of felt like a contract. Like, you remember one of our big criticisms for Black Adam versus Apocalypse? It just felt like they had to do it because their big bosses were pressuring them. Yeah. This kind of feels like that for season three because even the fights themselves are just so... There's just no energy in them. Like, the actors just feel like we're just getting paid to shout and pretend to fight, so whatever. And sure, they do bring in, like, some famous historical characters, like uh, Genghis Khan versus Hannibal. I I wasn't able to watch that episode again. It's trying to find these episodes without spending money. Not easy. Bro, they tested an elephant in that episode. Oh, really? Oh, I, okay, I'm very tempted to Where do up. you think Steve came from? Steve, that was his original appearance. Steve the Elephant has always been a part of Death Battle, bruh. Mind blow. <laughs> what the so that's why he keeps coming back. He, he in, terms of, <laughs> in terms of Death Battle, though, he made his first cameo in Deadpool vs. Deathstroke. Bro, guys, have we have we just found Steve the Elephant's origin? This is where he originated. <laughs> okay, jokes aside, um, yeah, season three, though, you don't have an... So, and here's the thing people always tend to forget. You can tell that a show it sometimes might not be good because there's not enough passion behind it. For instance, look at Modern Day Family Guy, for instance. You can just tell they're just being rushed out because they, they get the views, they earn the money. But then, let's look at something like Early Day Family Guy. Like, they had creative writing. One, Seth MacFarlane wrote a lot of the episodes, and I don't care what people say, Seth MacFarlane's actually funny when he's allowed to write his stuff. But also, his characters were characters. Yeah. Like, and they had personalities and stuff like that. They were funny. But to be honest here, Deadliest Warriors Season 3 just feels though they had to do it because it was either part of their contract uh, or they just didn't know what to do. Like, they were running out of steam. Which, you know, honestly... Yeah, because another reference. To, so I mentioned uh, Army uh, America versus North Korean uh, Special Forces. So... And not in the previous season, they had the CIA versus KGB, and they did so many creativity using like these uh, CIA type weaponry and stuff like that, and they were very creative because it was like a six on six. They did something similar with the America Rangers versus North Korean Special Forces, but it just felt like I was watching a war documentary, not really an interesting one. And it even ends with a. Like, a almost like a fisticuff fight, but then it just ends with the last guy being machine gunned. I'm like, oh. I mean, the Celtic guy had a spear lodged into him, and the guy, the Persian drove it into him as the Celtic gave him one last fuck you before he died. Uh, one guy got his arm hacked off and then uh, beaten to death. Or hell, the KGB one. After you think in the KGB one, the CIA guy comes from behind him in the car as he's getting away and fiber wires him to death. It's like, these creative deaths and fights then in the last few it just feels as though they were just really like it's kind of like how i feel with bat in the suns uh i do like bat in the suns like um versus show at the time but there's one thing many people agree is that the finale devs were kind of meh and honestly that's where this show was getting and even the research side of it was just so boring like mate you remember how i mentioned the vampires versus zombies mm -hmm. i want <laughs> Guess who they got to represent the zombie side? Uh, like, okay. George Romero? That would be kind of funny. But no, you're probably... But let's be honest here. In the end ones, they had, like, weapon experts, right? You're probably thinking they'll get someone like, I don't know, someone who studied autonomy or someone who's studied zombies and, like, you know, human history, right? Right. No, they just bought some random writer who wrote the World War Z novel. Oh. Like, who only done his own version of the zombies? I was gonna say my second guess would have been someone from Treyarch. 
Well, no, it's like, you don't even bring someone who's a specialist on this stuff. Same on the vampire, they just brought in some guy who wrote his own version of the vampires. It's like, where's that, where's that love where both sides have been researching this? Like, what made the others interesting was, you had people who've stepped, like, historian researchers who've looked into these stories of these ancient warriors, ex-military who've been in the military, who knew of the KGB, who've been in the American Special Forces. But no, you just bring some random writers for... Like, if this was just, like, a Halloween special, no biggie. Like, I could accept a little funny heart. But this is the big finale to a show which I think was actually pretty good from the short episodes I've seen. And sadly... Yeah. This is where the show, well, given the fact the final combatants, this is where the show died. After their contract was up, they left. They said sayonara. I think that video game came out afterwards, but I don't think I didn't even know that game existed. <laughs> is that, there was actually two video games from the show. I guess that has that over Death Battle, but I think this just goes to show that. I guess sometimes the classics aren't always the greatest, because if I really had to say which one was better, Death Battle. Oh, for sure. Now listen, you can't, there's no denying Death Battle definitely has improved the Deadliest Warrior formula, but the thing with Deadliest Warrior is, it has my respect for what it did for Versus Debating in general. It made it mainstream. Without this, we probably would not have gotten Death Battle. Hell, we probably would not have ever gotten Halo in either. No, no, we definitely wouldn't have gotten Death Battle. Yeah, I suppose that's one thing. I don't want it to seem like a bummer end because I do encourage people to. I mean, after I've watched the more episodes on YouTube, yeah, next payday, I'm definitely gonna buy these DVDs on Amazon because you know what? They seem like a good time. Even similar how Mate described um, Ruby vs. Um, Ruby Mix Justice League, like, you could just honestly just have fun with it. You could tell the people behind the show had so much fun with it, so. Honestly. Sure, there are some cringy okay. lines, like, I can agree yeah. with that, but, and maybe some people get a bit too into the historic facts, but there are some episodes I haven't seen yet, there's one with Shaolin Monks versus a character, um, I might even look up one episode in season 3, which was Ivan the Terrible versus Harness Kotas, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but there's still a lot Kangas of- Khan? No, no, Kangas Khan's a separate yeah. episode, uh, but- Or do you mean Hannibal? Which one are you talking yeah. about? Uh, regardless of that, uh, but there's another one that I saw on this list, Vlad the Impaler versus Sun Tzu. It's like, I've not seen that episode, but I know of these two. That sounds amazing. So, Listen, if you guys are looking for a specific thing with this show, definitely look at the weapon testing that they do. Oh, Not only is the passion there, but, oh my god, they, they, they get so creative with how to test them. Yeah, like, and that's... Honestly, the best way I can sum up this show is like, you know what, have your opinion of what you think about the people behind the show, how the show felt, because let's be real here, like, mate, how we're describing to you, season three doesn't sound like a good season, does it? No, well, the finale doesn't, especially. Yeah, but how, after how me and John have described the show in general, though, has it interested you to maybe pick it up yourself? Like, because, I mean, I would... I tried watching one episode. Oh, did you not have positive opinions on it <laughs> i mean i was watching it feeling like okay i can definitely see where the death battle stuff is coming from and there were things that i was just like okay that's really cool like it was the roman centurion uh, episode oh nice and when they were testing out the other guy's weapon they brought out oh here's the chainmail armor that the roman would be wearing let's wrap it around this pig can a weapon stab through it and yeah it fucking did <laughs> yeah so uh, I guess to answer the questions, I, uh, yeah. So, oh, sorry, I thought you were done. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this was just like a thing on Daily Motion because that's how I watched it, or if this is just the actual episode itself. I just kind of felt like it was a bit long. Well, uh, the episodes were back on Spike TV. This was back when people's attention span was a lot better than a, than a TikTok. <laughs> oh, they were about an hour-long episode. Sean here roasting the uh, Zoomers of this generation. <laughs> you know what that earns. <laughs> I'll allow that soundboard for once. <laughs> I'll allow it. Every episode are, are like uh, slightly above 45 or under 45 minutes per episode because, you know, TV time, Spike TV, and there was a lot they could do, so they made that time work. 
Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and I guess where they're looking into every single weapon from those, from what that military or what warrior would have, it makes sense because they're testing each one of them to then put it into a simulation. Uh, but to be honest, though, I do kind of agree with Sean. Though I think without this show, we probably wouldn't have had Death Battle because Death Battle took this formula and improved it. Kind of like how I saw um, there are just some gamers or writers out there that take what was really good about one thing and just improved it. Like for instance, this might be a random one, Shovel Knight. So it's obviously taken inspirations from the classic Mega Man games. Now Mega Man games have kind of fallen out, they've been trying to change their formula for a long time before, you know, they went back to what made them great. But the people behind Shovel Knight were like, you know what, I can take that old formula and make it better. And they did, we got a freaking awesome side-scrolling game. Death Battle is the Shovel Knight to Deadliest Warriors OG Mega Man. Thankfully, you know, Mega Man, uh, I think, what was it, Mega Man 8 that came out recently? Or was it 9? I think that was it. Okay, but yeah, so, yeah, it, you know, they took an old concept and they have made it work, and it's clearly worked because, uh, one, they're doing pretty well on their own, even if they're not, I mean, they're still getting funded by Rooster Teeth, but you can tell, like, they're starting the membership thing to earn more income for their show, and yeah, people are still talking about Death Battle. People are praising yeah. it, and the animation quality. Just look at look like look at the recent episode, Dragonborn versus Chosen Undead, and then compare it to Boba Fett versus Samus. Like, We've come a long way. We have come a long way. Yeah, and I know like Ben and Chad have talked about this on Death Battle Cast, but like. Death Battle's become so big, it's gotten to a point when people, like, whenever they're talking about a matchup, they don't say, oh, who would win a fight or anything like that. It It's just who would win a death battle. Yeah, like... Even, even when they're not talking about the show itself. Hmm. But even, like, YouTubers referencing, even if their YouTube channels are not talking about it. Like, I remember watching one of Markiplier's uh, forest streams on Twitch, and they were arguing about, I think it was pies and cakes. And Mark was like, right, that's it. Death battle, pies versus cakes. It's like, oh, that's cool. He referenced that. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, like, some other YouTubers reference it, too. Like, uh, uh, Ray, in one of his streams, he was uh, streaming Ratchet and & Clank. And someone mentions Ratchet & Clank versus Jack & Daxter because that was coming out at the time. And he was like, oh, that'd be an awesome death battle. Mm. Or, or in Team Four Stars' uh, commentaries... Uh, when they do the first Cooler movie and Cooler gets blasted into the sun, it's just like, how fast was that coming out my heart? Uh, Lanny just looks at the camera. Calculated Death Battle. Oh, hell, yeah, Team uh, Force, I've always referenced Death Battle. Like, when they did Deadpool versus Cell during that whole Cell, perhaps one of the funniest things that ever came out of the Team Four Star series. I'm really glad Devil Give Art. Give Goku my condolences about Superman. Yeah, and even the little, kind of little jab where. They got uh, Taka's Deadpool like, hey, how come they didn't have me? I was in Death Battle. That wouldn't be the first time they got something wrong. <laughs> it's like, ooh. <laughs> but, so, do you know what? Deadly is Warrior, though. I don't want it to seem like, oh, Deadly is Warrior shit. No, no, no. The time it came out, it was a, It seemed like it would have been a fun show to watch. I'm sad I never got to watch it during its, its prime. But, to answer this question, do I want to see Deadly as Warriors come back? In a way, yes, but at the same time, given how Season 3 was clearly just running on Steam and they just didn't seem like they had the passion for anymore, do I really want these same people coming back just to do a show they clearly have no passion for? Or even how, just bringing in some other people to discuss it? It's like, I think Deadliest War was good for the time, but I think the other reason why Death Battle would always be more successful is because they're talking about all sorts of fictional stories, not just real events. Like, sure, it's cool to see who would win between a knight and a pirate and, you know, samurai and a spartan, but... Or was Viking versus samurai, wasn't it? Viking versus samurai. Right. The spartan and samurai actually did face off in uh, the Back for Blood episode. Oh, nice. D don't spoil anything about this. I actually want to maybe one day watch it. There are some episodes I don't know the winner of, but uh, honestly, I really... I actually really enjoyed my time watching a few episodes, and am I going to pick up the show? Yeah, I'll probably see if it's on offer someday, and... I'm not spending thirty-two pounds for just one season. <laughs> I'm sorry, people. Do you think That's I'm weird. made of money? For, for us in the US, it only costs twelve. What the fuck, man? Is it because it's like an American show or something? 
Oh, that's bullshit. Mate, we need to start a war with America. Let's go! Britain versus America! Final deadliest warriors! <laughs> do you guys want to lose again? No, no, no. Here's what we do. Here's what we do. Alright. We get 68 million Brits. 30, uh, 330 million Americans drinking contest. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Do you know what, people? That's the that's the lads to, uh, poll this time. Who would win in a fight in a drinking... Or who would win a drinking contest? America or Britain? <laughs> you know, I saw... The, uh, there's this uh, Twitter account, No Context Brits. They did that poll. Jesus Christ, it was a landslide. All right, but do you know what? This is for lads to discuss death battle. All right, people, so that's the poll for this episode of this discussion, really. All right, who would win the drinking contest? America or Britain? Or America and England? Let's go. Let's let's bring all of England. We have the Irish on our side, too. <laughs> it's specifically uh, 68 million Brits versus 330 Americans. Don't know why so specific, but okay. <laughs> but, um... That's my final sound of Deadliest War. You know what? I think it's a good show. I might look it up and see what uh, what the rest of the show is like. And yeah, Sean, you clearly have a lot of passion for this show. So what do you want to? What do you want your final say to be? Deadliest Warrior was what I watched growing up because I was very into history. So I always wanted to watch shows about you know history. And I thought this show was very enjoyable. It had one of the coolest concepts for the time in two thousand nine. The fact of the matter is that some of the early seasons are still holding up according to like critic reviews and everything. And I think people should give it a shot if they have never seen the show. It kind of introduced one of the big mechanics that Death Battle has used, like who wins more times than not. So if you wonder where Death Battle got that rule for, there you go. Oh, okay. So, uh, mate, I guess, uh, what was your what would your final say be about Deadliest War? Are you interested in maybe checking out more episodes? Uh I don't know, maybe. Good enough. <laughs> but um yeah, so people, that was uh our third topic for uh, what you guys voted for, lads discuss uh Deadly's Warrior. I actually had fun with this topic. I, I really just expected going into this thinking, okay, it's just another, you know, documentary show and stuff like that, but I can clearly see where Death Out got the inspiration for. But uh, the next time, though, on the next recording session, so obviously we will talk about Killua versus Misaka. Uh, did I say that right? Please tell me I said it right. Yes. Yeah. Cool. We're going to obviously talk about it next time, but the third topic, by given how we're doing this poll, which got the most, uh, opinions or you know most voted for the next third topic is going to be episodes we were too harsh on so episodes that we we might have just thought was meh or we thought was shit and i'm just gonna say i have three episodes that i definitely think i was a bit harsh on and i have a couple and i'm looking forward to discussing it and obviously these guys are going to have their own but uh we'll look forward to seeing what uh we want to see in the comments like what episodes do you think you were harsh on before uh we discussed that topic and again, what did you think of Deadliest Warrior? And what did you think about uh, Dragon Ball vs. Chosen Undead? Skyrim vs. Dark Souls, whatever you want to call it. And what do you think of the next time? Uh, with all that said and done, thank you all so much for watching. And stick around, we'll have more content like this in the future. You're already mate. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. If you did not enjoy, be sure to like and subscribe. Not so good. <laughs> it's, it's not so good, is it? <laughs> Uh, be sure to uh, check out everything that Bill does. Uh, click the links to go to mine and Sean's channels. And we'll see you next time. Bye. And uh, Sean here. Thank you, folks, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Last Discuss Death Battle. Let us know your thoughts about Skyrim versus Dark Souls. Because me and Bill absolutely loved it. Yeah. Uh... What are your thoughts on Killua versus Misaka down below in the comments? And what do you think of Deadliest Warrior? Did we interest you in checking it out? Or have you seen the show and what are your thoughts on it? And with that being said, thank you much for watching. And I will see you all later. <laughs> Shut the fuck up with the door! <laughs>